Hi guys, I just wanted to uh, go through a little um, function that I've written uh, just to help uh, show a progress bar on your screen. Um, you can see from the LCD screen that I've got that I've got a progress bar running across the bottom line. Um, it runs across the full width, um, which is the way it's set up. Um, and although it's counting from 0 to 100 and then from 100 back down to 0, um, you can count up to any amount you want that will be covered by an unsigned long um, variable, which I believe is something like 2 billion or something ridiculous. So um, obviously you won't see much movement in that case um, because it uh, there's only 80 columns in this particular screen, um, but we'll come to all that in a moment anyway. But um, if I just show you the program, um, here we have at the, the top the include statements for the wire library and the liquid crystal I2C. Um, they're necessary because I am using the I2C version of the liquid crystal display. Um, I've then set up the liquid crystal display with the address and the fact that it's a 16 by 2 display. Obviously, if your address is different or you're using a 20 by 4 display, you'll need to change that accordingly. Um, equally, if you're not using the I2C version, um, you need to just make sure that it does support the same um, functions that the LCD I'm using does, or you'll need to adjust it accordingly. Um, so now we go down and we're going to set up, start off with some byte arrays from 0 to 5. Now, each individual byte array has a, a obviously a byte in it. Now, you can see that it only has five bits in each byte. The reason for that is because this byte array effectively represents a single character on the screen. So each character is five pixels wide and seven pixels high. Um, you could put in the extra three bytes if you want to, but the leading three zeros will be ignored anyway. So we have one here for zero, for one, for two, for three, for four, for five. Um, just interestingly enough, you can set up any character you want and call it anything you want in, in this particular section. Um, but because I only am interested in producing bars on the screen for a progress bar, um, I'm not going to change that. So once we've got those set up in the, the very top of the program, we then go into the setup. Uh, first thing I do is begin the LCD screen and I create characters. So each of these byte arrays has a name. So for example, we see at the bottom here, we got uh, array number five, oh, called number five, and I've allocated it to a number. So zero to zero, one to one, two to, et cetera, et cetera. I think I'm right in saying you can have up to seven uh, of these um, custom characters. Um, so you could add another another one on there if you wanted something different. Uh, or you, if you're doing a different program entirely, you can change these and make them into whatever you want. But that's a, a different tutorial altogether. So now once we've created that in the startup, we now go down into the loop. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the main loop is very simple. I've got two for loops. First one counts from 0 to 100. It sets the cursor in the top left corner, prints out what the current number is, followed by some leading spaces. It then calls the update progress bar method, which we'll go through in a moment, gives a delay, um, and then once that's completed, it gives a second delay, and then it does another for loop, which is exactly the same, but it counts down and counts down four times as quick. So it's, that's a very simple setup, and you can do whatever you want with that, or do something completely different, but it's just to show off the this particular method. Now you can see here that I've given it three different um, arguments. The first one is i, which is the current count, the 100, which is what we're counting up to, and the 1 represents the line that we're printing onto. So if we go down, I have actually uh, written quite a lot of information as to exactly what's what with regards to this and how it works, but I will just go through it very briefly. Um, the method is very, very simple. Um, you pass to it the current count you're on, the total count that you're going up to, and the line that you want to print on. Um, now, the 80 in this first um, equation relates to how many columns there are. Now, obviously, in a 16 by 2 display, there are 16 characters in width, but each of those characters 
is five pixels wide. So if we take one pixel as being one column, and we got five in a character and 16 characters long, that gives us a total of 80. Now, if you had a 20 by 4 display, you'd have 20 characters with 5 pixels wide, and then you would end up with 100. Now, I, I have put this down with a decimal point, because if you don't, and you basically divide an integer by an integer, you end up with an integer um, as your result. But we don't want that. We want the factor to be a decimal number, um, or potentially a decimal number. So if you change that to 100, it would be 100.0. So just bear that in mind if you do change that. So once we've got our, our factor, which is essentially the to total count divided by how many columns we've got, we then work out the percentage, which is the count plus 1, divided by the factor, which we've got from here, and that gives us our percent. Once we've got our percentage, we want to know the number. Now, the number is essentially the column, um, uh, sorry, the character. So it's from 0 to 16, which is the percentage divided by 5. Now, in order to create the individual um, columns within a character, we need to know what the remainder of that, that uh, equation is. So we use the remainder function on exactly the same equation. So instead of percent divided by 5, it's percent remainder 5. Um, so that gives us the remainder. So you will end up with the whole number between 0 and 16 and a remainder between 0 and 5. So if the number, which is the, the whole number, which represents the column, is greater than 0, so it's 1 uh, or above, you set the cursor to whatever that number is at minus 1. So if you set it, if, if the number is essentially 1, then you set the cursor to 0 and the line which you've determined you want to print on, and then you write number 5, which is essentially a full block. Um, on top of that, um, regardless of what the number is, you set the cursor to whatever the number is, rather than the number minus 1, the line to print, and then you write remainder. Now, remainder, is, as we said, is a number between 1 and 5, and that remainder number will then equate to what we have determined up here when we've created our characters. So this is the reason for numbering them as we have in the way that we have, because then that just makes it very, very simple. So essentially what it does is as it counts from zero, uh, number will be zero, so therefore it doesn't print anything, um, or it doesn't print a whole block, but it will start printing the part blocks, so from zero, one, two, three, four, and then when it gets up to the five, you end up with the whole number, and the whole number then prints the block. And then it goes on to the next column and does the same, and then prints a block, next column, and so on and so forth. Now, the only thing with this uh, method, function, whatever you want to call it, is it only works for a linear movement from zero to your number, from your number back to zero. Uh, this doesn't work if you have an input from a, an analog source, for example, which jumps about all over the place. Um, but if that was the case, this would be more complex and you would be writing to the LCD a lot more frequently. But for a linear movement, which we've got, this works perfectly well. So I hope that's um, been explained fairly well for you. Feel free to use this if you find it useful in your own project. If you've got any questions, please ask. If you've got any comments, leave them, positive or negative. Um, I'm always open to, to criticism either way. Um, and I hope this has been helpful. Thanks very much for watching.